So the ranks were just reset in Halo Infinite, and now we have to regrind our ranks again. But in this video, I'm gonna give you the top five tips to rank up now in Halo Infinite. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So if you've been out of the loop for the last few days or so, you're probably asking yourself, why were the ranks just reset? Well, 343 did post up a blog about this. We did cover this on the channel previously, but basically the ranks are a little inflated and inaccurately showing skill level a little too high than they should have been. So 343 has gone back and made some back end skill updates to the game since launch to kind of keep everyone in track of where they should be. And they kind of actually saw that a lot of people were a full tier higher than they should have been, which is like, Kind of crazy but the interesting thing is like now your highest placement can be diamond five instead of diamond one like it was traditionally since we're back into grinding halo infinite ranks again and it's been three months since the release of the game now we've had some time to learn the meta and understand how to improve at the game and all the little intricate details we didn't have when the game first launched so this would be a great kind of refresher a lot of great tips and tricks when it comes to getting better at halo infinite so let's jump right into it so the first tip I want to give for you guys today is to play as a team. As Halo is a very team-focused game, it's not like other games where you can kind of run out there, do your own thing, and be a one-man wrecking crew. You can do that a little bit in Halo Infinite, but you need some help from your friends. And so you want to make sure you stay close enough to your teammates where you can help them out, but obviously not close enough where you're holding hands and catching grenades together. Not that close, you know, social distance a little bit here. But a great thing to do is when you're playing with your squad online is to just make sure you kind of stay within distance with them to help assist on team shots, clean up kills if they died and left the guy one shot or something like that. Also help watch other angles that they can't keep an eye on. Just kind of help out your team essentially. And as you do that, it really does help out your score as well because if you can help out clean up those kills, that's just an extra kill to your tally and it's way less effort for you to do. And a big thing about Halo Infinite is clean up kills taking advantage of situations and you never really want to be the person who instigates gunfights you kind of want to catch people off guard and weakened by their shields and the best way to catch people when they're weak and low on shields is to be playing with a team so that's my first tip for you guys another tip i would have for you guys is to hit your shots and well duh kevin do that but there's definitely ways to get better to where you can confidently hit your shots one of the ways to get better at Halo Infinite is by doing this right here. Going into training mode, turn on Spartan level difficulty, play fighting on with infinite ammo with your battle rifle, and just practice strafing and hitting your shots. You can be surprised about how much better you will get, get better at aiming when it comes to actually just mindlessly killing these bots over and over again. It also helps test out your sensitivities, get the things just kind of feeling just right, and also work out the intricacies of your weapon. One thing I learned is that you don't actually have to aim your center of your crosshair to get that headshot on an enemy Spartan. You can actually kind of line up with the bottom part of the reticle, and it actually will still get you the headshot. You guys will see right here, I will not aim for the top of the head, at the reticle and you see right there i was kind of aiming chest level but still got that headshot kill because of the vertical recoil of the battle rifle so it's just those little intricacies that you learn about when it comes to playing this game so jump into training mode jump into the firing range and kind of understand the lead times when it comes to some of the projectile weapons like the stalker rifle the sniper rifle understand the intricacies of how to aim the battle rifle and things like that will increase your ability so much more in this game now a very important thing when it comes to any kind of shooter out there is to understand your settings your controller mouse keyboard and video settings guys these are extremely important for you to get down properly for button layout i would not go with the default layout as it's very similar to call of duty you want to try to keep your thumbs on the sticks as much as possible the default layout really makes you do that a lot and so you don't want to really want to utilize that i like to have hold crouch turned on maintain sprint turned on step jump i've actually been playing around with quite a bit step jump is a great feature where you can kind of just push yourself up against the wall like this right move forward kind of jump up a little bit and it puts you right up there i hit a full jump if i didn't have that on i'd just be doing this up into the point really decreases that jump height on those little edges that you want to jump on very useful now when it comes to sensitivities everyone has their own preferences i have a five on acceleration 2.5 on vertical and horizontal some people have more or less depending on your play style and things like that uh, for five times zoom i like to bump it up to 1.4 sensitivity for the sniper rifle that's the first scope of the sniper rifle zoom i find that to be a little bit more free and a little bit easier to aim around with now dead zones you really want to minimize these as much as possible before you experience any kind of form of stick drift 
Now for my controller, a lot of us out there have buttons on the back and I really like to program these. These are very useful when it comes to playing Halo Infinite. So what I like to have mine set is the AI scan. Then one is the mark feature so you can call out people if you're just doing solo queue. Don't worry about actually communicating with people, super useful. Then I have the upper right is gonna be for the drop weapon option. So when you're doing like a mangler fight, do a couple shots, quick drop the weapon. It's always quicker to drop your weapon than to actually switch to it. So that's super important to know. And then the bottom right here is for using equipment. So I have to take my thumbs off the sticks as little as possible. It's very useful. And this controller is very useful. A quick word from our sponsor, Hex Gaming. Hex Gaming right here sent me a controller when I was able to customize it however I like. It has this cool kind of blue flame kind of decal on it. Pretty sweet. But a really important thing that comes with these Hex Gaming controllers is that they got buttons on the back, which in Halo is super useful. That way I don't have to take my thumbs off the sticks and I can still be super effective while playing the game. I've been playing with this controller on stream. Essentially what it is, it's a modified Xbox Series X controller. They use the actual hardware. This isn't some weird like Mad Cats knockoff. They take the real deal and they modify it to make it something a little more what gamers want. You can go onto their website as well and customize it however you like. The buttons, the paddles, the triggers, the coatings, if you want uh, like a different kind of decal on it and things like that far more customizable than you can do on the xbox website and i'll say a comparable price to a elite controller but the reason why i'm using my hex gaming controller over my elite controller left bumper right here doesn't work anymore all the buttons on this one definitely work they also have different accessories like this one right here you can see my right stick is actually higher than my left stick this allows me to have a higher sensitivity and more control over my character as well a really great addition like it's kind of like almost a necessity now for me when playing on controller check out the link in the pinned comment and in the description down below to use my referral link and if you decide to purchase anything make sure you use my code to get five percent off your purchase help support me and help support a smaller company as well now for my mouse and keyboard gang members out there you mainly want to do is what for aiming is to kind of use your wasd keys as your macro aiming and then your micro aiming being your mouse to just kind of do minor adjustments you definitely want to utilize a slow sensitivity when it comes to your mouse as well it's because it's such a tiny little fraction of a movement to go from like chest shots to up to head shots and the big thing i usually do when it comes to sensitivity is you know everyone's play space is different so what i like to do is whatever your 180 degree is for your max distance that's what you want it to be so what i mean by here is this is kind of like my neutral position on my mouse pad right if i do all the way to the right to the edge of my mouse pad that's a 180 degree turn that's about the right sensitivity i like to be able to have to be able to do a 180 whenever i need to because obviously in a shooter you're gonna need to be able to do that another huge thing about playing well in Halo Infinite is having good video settings. And so then you don't have the issues of any kind of frame drops or any kind of issues happening. Obviously on console, your experience is a little more curated where on PC, it's a little more expansive where I like to put my FOV at 100 uh, just because if you have it at obviously the lowest settings, things look really close to the screen and it looks really freaking weird. But you can kind of see how large the Spartan looks on my screen, pretty easy to aim for. But when I go into settings here and then go to make it like 120 FOV, very small target and it's just very hard to aim for my opinion so what i like to do is generally keep my fov right around 100 or right at 100 i feel like just kind of just the sweet spot right there now depending on your graphics card you might be able to do 100 resolution just fine but you can actually have this resolution lower which i currently play at 1080p because my 1080 ti while streaming can't really handle the whole thing so much at 60 frames per second so obviously if i lower this down a lot more i can get more frames out of the game so if you don't care about having a blurry image kind of when it comes to your shooters well then put this all the way down to freaking 763p you'll be getting tons of frames but you'll be looking like you're playing without your glasses another great feature for you streamers out there to have is limit inactive frame rate so what this does is you can see in the upper right hand corner i'm playing on 60 frames per second but as soon as i click off of the screen the frame rate drops down to 30. This helps lower the weight of the game on your PC. So if you're trying to switch over to do something different while you're streaming, this is a very useful tool. I always have this turned on. Now when it comes to graphic settings, generally just kind of go with low if you're looking for performance and obviously things like ambient occlusion, shadow quality would definitely 
increase your weight of the game on your CPU. But a really important feature that you want to make sure you have on Ultra is simulation quality. 343 said that this is the quality sitting that will help you out a lot when it comes to getting shot around corners. This is going to be very important for you to have on the highest level possible. Number four in this list would be to learn the maps. And what I mean by that is by learning the weapon spawns, lines of sight, opening routes, and nade spots as well. Super crucial to get down. Weapon spots, especially stuff like the grenades, especially those dynamo grenades, which have become super meta over the past month or so. Understanding lines of sight and not overextending yourself to where you can get yourself in some pretty bad situations. Another important thing is to learn nade spots. Nade spots have always been a really crucial thing when it comes to playing Halo. A really great one that I like to utilize, especially on Bazaar for the beginning of the match, is to just kind of lob a nade like that across the map. You'll see that where it lands, is right either at the bridge right here or at the big door, which obviously at the big door is a really important part for people to usually run out for their opening routes, which again, like I talked about earlier, opening routes are incredibly important when it comes to Halo because it gets really set the momentum in your favor. So you want to understand where the power weapons are. So for example, here on Bazaar, they have the active camo, you got the dynamo nades here, you got the rocket launcher up here, and you have the shotgun that spawns up down below or the heat wave depending on the map variant. So when I know when I spawn on this side of the map, I have a direct plan of attack to go to right away. I'm not just kind of aimlessly just kind of run straight out into the middle and just hope for the best, which puts me in the lower ground situation and just not a very good situation to be in in the first place. Either you want to try to jump up here where you can kind of get, maybe get a chance to grab like a battle rifle and then kind of pick off players and then go for the rocket launcher. Maybe throw some grenades into that corner. Just to kind of set yourself up in proper positioning so when you do take out a few enemies, then you push up and grab your goodies. Next, let's talk about movement, which is incredibly important in Halo Infinite. If you can get your movement down just right, it can make a huge difference from you getting that power weapon, making your way through the map and not dying. It's incredibly important in this game. And plus, it's really fun to master. So talking about movement, a really important thing is your strafe. That is your left and right movement to help dodge your character from taking shots. Now, this is mainly what you want to do is kind of take it as in circumstantial situations of depending on how that player is strafing on you, you have to kind of counter that strafe movement as well. But also what you mainly want to do is help keep your left stick on the character for the most part, and then use your right stick as micro adjustments, as we mentioned earlier from the mouse and keyboard section of this game. Another thing that is really helpful to utilize in your strafe is a crouch, as you can crouch pretty quickly and you can crouch while at full movement speeds and it's very useful, uh, but you definitely don't want to overuse it. I've seen people kind of like crouch spamming like this to try to dodge shots. I mean, it helps sometimes, uh, but for the most part, it is really annoying and doesn't really help you out from dodging shots a whole lot. Another thing you want to take a look at is the super slide as well, like the call it. This is like any kind of downward sloped geometry in Halo Infinite. You can have a really huge slide. All you need to do is sprint, jump, and then cold crouch, land onto the object, and then jump out of it and let you slide out. So let me run through it with you guys here. So you guys sprint, jump, crouch, holding crouch, slide out, jump. It's a huge movement boost right there that kind of gets you across the map a lot faster. Again, this is any downward slope. It doesn't have to be any kind of man-made looking feature. Like you see like this ground right here, jump, crouch, hold crouch, slide out again. You get that nice movement boost. It's super useful. The next bit of movement you want guys to get down is curb sliding. People are constantly curb sliding at higher levels of gameplay and it's super useful to get yourself around the map. As you can kind of see right here, I can jump on top of this ledge and if I time it just right, crouching, I go into a curb slide really fast motion compared to just like, you know, going off the edge and then sliding in way, way slower. So. Again, we'll try off of another example right here. The slow seems to be the lower the ledge, a little bit easier of a gap it is to try to time it out properly. But sometimes it can be a little difficult to nail just right. You want to make sure you're sprinting off the edge. And as you hit off the edge, you try to crouch right before the edge you walk off of. And it gives you a nice, really big boost of speed. So for another example here, you see me I'll sprint, jump, crouch, and there you go. Gives you a bit of a curb slide, a huge speed boost when it comes to moving through the map. Every ledge you want to try this out. It seems like the higher the ledge, the little bit more difficult it is to land that properly. And so then basically every single ledge, or the shorter the ledge is, the faster you need to make that crouch motion. Another thing you want to get down are these different types of jump spots within the maps of Halo Infinite. Now I'm not going to cover every single one. There are plenty of videos out there. One of my favorite jumps is a jump where you get to go from this little ledge right here up onto the C platform without having to do any form of a clamber. So you just kind of jump into this corner. You can kind of just walk right into this. It will keep you up in that corner 
turn around, jump over here, maybe do a little crouch on to make sure you hit it, and you're up there without doing a clamber. It's super useful. Again, that's just a taste of what you can do for all those jump spots in this game. Just look up a YouTube video. There's plenty of videos dedicated to jump spots within Halo Infinite. This video would be way too long if I was gonna cover every single important one. So once you take all five of these into account, working with your team, hitting your shots, knowing your proper video and controller settings, and also learning the maps and movement will help make you a much better player at Halo Infinite. So if you're new to the channel or missing any content from me recently, check out this playlist right here. Gonna link to all my Halo Infinite news and informational videos right there. Thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.